Making it green starts from the ground up, so make sure the air in your home is healthy for your family to breathe. Test your home for the presence of radon. Go to epa.gov slash radon. Make it green, green, green. Do you have a collection of films and videotape sitting in your attic, basement, hall closet, or a box somewhere that are being lost to time? Creative artists can transfer your 8mm, Super 8mm, and 16mm films, as well as converting your VHS, CVHS, 8mm, and Mini DV to DVD. Preserve your family's video history for the generations to come. Creative Artists, 1113 West Spring Street, Monroe, 770-267-7368. Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Jordan Flores from the AvenueChurch.tv, located here in Social Circle. We meet uh, at 11 on Sundays at the uh, Social Circle Theater. We're very excited. We're out here with this huge event we're doing for uh, Easter. It's a big, awesome community event. We got a uh, blow up for the kids, Easter egg, uh, egg drop extravaganza thing going on. Um, as you can see, it's blowing up and uh, we're really excited about it. We just want to encourage you guys, if you're out here and you were a part of it, man, we're glad you guys came out. If you missed it, we missed you. And uh, we're going to have some really exciting stuff going on. All kinds of egg drops for the kids. We got the blow-ups going all day, as well as some vendors and some cool things. We're giving away some helicopters, uh, some toy helicopters and things of that nature. But uh, we're just excited to be out here with the community and uh, just, it's been an awesome day.
This is Paul Mullins with Walton Entertainment, and today is Saturday, the 7th of April, and the Big East Rated Hunt down here in Social Circle. Uh, it was truly a success. The weather was just absolutely gorgeous. Couldn't have been any better. There were, I don't know, thousands of kids, I would say, at this big event, and they say this is going to be a every year occasion. This happens to be their, the first of their annual East Rated Hunt down here in Social Circle. I hope you've enjoyed these clips. This is Paul Mullins with Walton Entertainment. This is Paul Mullins with Walton Entertainment and we're here at the Clearview Regional Medical Center right here in Monroe. And it is such a fabulous place. Uh, you, if you didn't come to it uh, today, this is March 31st, Saturday. Uh, maybe from some of the clips we've got here, you'll be able to see what a fabulous place this is. So we're going to go inside and uh, take you on a tour. This is the cafeteria. That's right, this is broken. Hi, uh, we're here with Dr. Mark Schaefer, a podiatrist here at Clearview Regional Medical Center. And Dr. Schaefer, what are you doing at your booth today? Painting faces. Well, I'm not painting faces. My daughter is and her little posse. Yeah, good. Well, tell us a little bit about what kind of surgeries you do for people here in Walton County. Reconstructive foot and ankle surgery. Uh, we treat a lot of diabetic patients that have wounds and difficult things to heal because of their conditions like diabetes and high blood pressure and poor circulation and so forth. So. And Dr. Schaefer is one of our 45 surgeons here at Clearview Regional Medical Center. To find out more about him, you can visit clearviewregionalmedicalcenter.com. Center, and in fact, you can see that just last evening we had a few special deliveries here, some cuddle bugs that you see in the bassinets. But our new nursery has a private waiting room just outside that allows the families to be able to come and see their newborn um, through the beautiful glass windows and allows our nurses to have the latest in technology. So we're going to go take a tour inside now. So we're here in the nursery and this is Erica Ziegler who is our birth center manager and Erica is going to walk us around and just tell us a little bit about some of the latest technology that we have available here at Clearview Regional Medical Center. So tell us a little bit about this. This is the iRest Panda Warmer which is manufactured by GE. It's an integrated system which allows us to warm the newborn, weigh the newborn, monitor pulse oximetry, blend oxygen and gases, and it also provides vacuum regulation if necessary. And so babies do their transitional care right here on the radiant warmer. And not only do we have them in the newborn nursery, but they're at every patient's bedside after delivery. Well, let's go take a look at your labor and delivery, recovery, and postpartum rooms because that's one of the advantages here at Clearview Regional Medical Center. When you choose to have a baby with us, you actually have the baby in the room and you stay in the room the entire experience. No having you in a large labor room and then moving you to a small private space. You get a very large room and you stay there the entire time. So let's take a look. Okay, so we are now actually in one of the labor delivery, recovery and postpartum rooms, what we call an LDRP here at Clearview Regional Medical Center. And we wanted to give you a chance to have a tour through this space. So Erica's here with us again. And Erica, tell us a little bit about some of the special features here, um, including some of the um, ways we use artwork special. Well, this is an LDRP room which is designed to accommodate you through your labor, delivery, recovery, and postpartum experience. You never have to transition from this room to another setting. Um, the bed is designed to accommodate the patient through delivery and then back into a postpartum room. We have integrated gases in all of our head walls and behind the newborn stabilization area, we also have medical gases which are enabling us to provide resuscitation immediately at the patient's bedside. Mothers are encouraged to keep their babies with them as much as possible. We do have a newborn nursery available for rest and recuperation. What about for the dads when they're here? Because they often like to spend the night. So where do we put those we special We have bags? extra sleep facilities for fathers. And we have a large um, fold-out couch, which turns into a bed. And we have a smaller chair located behind the patient's sitting area, which allows them to have another guest if they so choose. Okay. And Paul, come over here with us, and we're going to ask one of our nurses, Kim Barra, to show us the way that we make our 
the way we make our rooms look more like a hotel. When we're ready to set up for a delivery, ready for resuscitation, we'll get rid of our work. Pull out our gases and all our equipment's here. Once the baby's done, it can go back to looking like your nice suite. Bed and see your brand new home for delivering the babies of Walton and surrounding communities. This is very nice. I love it. Yep, we've got the brand new state-of-the-art Hillrom Affinity 4. We have the iRest Panda Warmer that has integrated resuscitation capacities. Okay. For the newborn, we have built-in gases in our head walls. Okay. And behind the artwork over here, you can see Kim will show you that we have all the gases for the newborn. Oh, super. Readily available. I but love it. at the it. same time, we can keep the environment calm, soothing, and tone-like. Okay. Very good. We have overhead lights operated by a panel on the wall which allows the nurses to control them for your best visibility. This is very nice. I love it. <laughs> really excited. Yes. Hi, we're here now with Dr. Terry Changulia, who is our chief of staff and a local OBGYN here in the Walton County area. And Dr. Changulia, what's different about being here at Clearview from being at Walton if you're an expectant mother? Oh, a number of changes. Uh, for one, the nursery is much larger, and we now have a dedicated cesarean section room that is on our unit. Our labor and delivery suites are all private. Are much roomier uh, and are very accommodating for visitors and family. So what happens here if you need to have a C-section? Can you just stay right here in our own unit? You can stay right here in our own unit without having to be moved to the surgery department. So we are very excited for having this uh, expansion to our unit. We have more capacity for labor patients and our monitoring system is going to be state of the art. Uh, it's made by Phillips and it will allow us to keep a very close eye on our laboring patients as well as our high risk patients as well. So we're very proud of what we have here at Clearview Regional Medical Center. We think we've created a great birthing experience for the moms here in our community and we invite you to come by at any time to take a tour. You can simply call 770-267-1785. Hi, hello, I'm Kyle Morris. Thanks for tuning in today. Uh, we're really happy about Clearview Medical Center being open and uh, we, we will be a blessing for the community. Uh, I've been here since 1992 with Walton Family Medicine and we uh, I certainly have enjoyed the community and we're looking forward to good things from this hospital. Have a good day. My name is Rhonda Thomason. I'm the med surge director of um, the new facility. We have 36 all private patient rooms, all with new beds and new equipment, all high tech call light system. We do uh, full te uh, telemetry monitoring. Uh, the, uh, we're equipped for ortho orthopedics for when you have a hip replacement. Uh, our chairs are orth uh, orthopedic chairs, so they're higher up. Our bathrooms are amazing. Uh, no, you can't see them right now, but um, they're large and tiled, no tubs, they're walk-in um, bathrooms. We're very excited about it. Everything is just, it's all state-of-the-art facility, so we're very excited about it. This is the ICU area. You can see the nurses can be there at the stations and also look through and see the patients at the same time. My name is Dr. Norman. I'm uh, one of the general lap mentally invasive laparoscopic surgeons here at uh, Clearview Medical Center. And this morning, we're just going to say a little few words about our Da Vinci system, this robotic uh, system for uh, minimally invasive surgery. Uh, this technology was actually introduced uh, somewhere around 1999, and it's been being uh, 
advanced upon since that time. It's a very good system for us to uh, provide minimally invasive uh, procedures uh, for patients. And it, what it, it does several things. Um, it, it helps to uh, increase visualization, increases a surgeon's dexterity, uh, it, it can give you better control and better precision uh, in all of the operations. Uh, if you look to the, this side over here, you'll see the surgeon's console. And in the console, the surgeon will sit there and it's very nice ergonomic de design. Uh, myself, I've been in operations where they get to be complicated or complex. They can last several hours, six, seven, eight, or more hours sometimes, and that can cause some, some physical strain. This is a very nice ergonomic design, and uh, the surgeon will have a 3D high-definition vision uh, through here, so it gives them depth, uh, depth perception, which, which mimics uh, open, natural surgery. Um, it also has, uh, has the capability of uh, switching different energy type fields a surgeon might need for coagulopathy or, or for, to, to do coagulation or laser. Um, so that's, that's the, uh, the console over there. This console can also be reconfigured, uh, reconfigured so that you can have a second console and two surgeons can collaborate on the same operation. Um, they can change the, uh, change the control of these, uh, of these uh, controls here, of these instruments between the two consoles. It can also import images from uh, radiology or other, other places so that it's, it's very, it's pretty high tech, state of the art. Up here you can see, can, can you look at that? This right here is a, is a, uh, this is a, this is a two dimensional image here. So this is a little bit, not going to be quite as, as good as what the surgeon is actually seeing, but this right here is going to uh, show the entire room what's going on. This image, this up here, is going to be known as what we call the wall of knowledge. The wall of knowledge, so that this image can be separated into four separate images, can import images from, uh, from other parts in the hospital, from radiology, things like that, so people, another, another OR room maybe, so people might need to collaborate with each other on an operation. This is, uh, soft tissue surgery. This looks like a gastric bypass operation going on. If you look at those instruments up there, those are endo wrist instruments. And they really enhance dexterity. They actually give you better dexterity than the human hand would have. Um, it gives you seven degrees of freedom, as well as over 90 degrees of articulation. If you see your hand can't go 90 degrees from side to side, but these instruments can do that. So this actually, uh, it actually gives you better dexterity. Also, since this is a robotic system, if there's any tremor in the hand at all, uh, it has the, the, the robot senses that and, and fixes it so that this is much more steady. Okay? So it's just like when you have a camera and it takes out motion. Motion artifact, it's going to be improved with this. Um, the visualizations, as I said, improved up to 10 times visualization. You can do, uh, I'm sorry, 10 times magnification. And uh, it's, it's just a, a very nice system. It's, it's, um, from what the surgeon is seeing to what you see here, it's, it's going to be like a seamless transition because when the surgeon is looking down, it's just as if you're looking at your two hands, 3D image looking at your two hands, and that's what, exactly what this is doing. So it's, you can move your wrist and the instrument's going to move. And very small movements over here, can turn, I'm sorry, the, the bigger movement of your hand can turn into a very small movement over here, so it's, it's a very nice system. It really, it really improves. Uh, uh, what this will do, this whole system will do, is improve uh, the patient's recovery time, less blood loss. It, uh, it makes it makes much more complex, uh, minimally invasive operations uh, easier to do. So, uh, so overall, less complications. Overall, it's, it's very good for the patients and the doctors. Thank you so much. I appreciate okay. you telling us all about it. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Jane Smith. I'm a registered x-ray and CT technologist at Clearview Regional Medical Center. This is my new, I'm calling it my baby. It's uh, Philips 64 slice scanner. If you own it, I can scan it. We will find it. Our system is all digital now. And so the minute I'm through scanning you, I hit in. The images go to my radiologist for him to view. And at the same time, since we're all digital, it can go to your doctor's office by remote. He can pull your images up and look at them also. 
but this is going to be a wonderful tool. We are moving up. We have upgraded from what we have, and I am so very excited about this. I can't wait to get started here on the 22nd. 7 a.m. I'll be here. Can't wait. Teddy Bear Clinic is set up on the other side of the kids. All right, I'm sitting up there. Obviously, much bigger than it was before. We have 15 beds. Um, four of those are trauma rooms. We have an area where we uh, monitor our psychiatric patients uh, for our mental health population. We have a, a decontamination room for, that handles our biohazard uh, or chemical issues that we can decontaminate those patients. Um, our fast track is set up over behind triage, so hopefully to provide an area where we can get folks in and out really quickly. This is our kind of our central station for the nurses. Um, our charge nurse and the secretary will be located centrally where we can handle the patients that are coming in from EMS or from out front. Um, and the, obviously we have um, several normal regular exam rooms so that we can expedite the patient coming in and out of our facility. Thank you. Thank you. And this is a close-up of the decontamination room. They can come in from the outside, so therefore they can come directly to this room and not interrupt the hospital. So this is a trauma room. This is actually a trauma room. It's a trauma bay. And we have state-of-the-art equipment in here with a monitoring system that also we can view out in the nurses' station. These are the new pool lights, which um, they're, they're state-of-the-art technology. They don't make you hot if you have to be under them. All of the rooms will have um, supplies at our fingertips. They'll be in the room now. We won't have to go out to get them. Um, and we're a level three trauma center, uh, which means that we have specialties on call. And um, so if you come in and you need an orthopedist or you need some specialty, they're on call for us, so. This is the ER waiting room. Very nice here in the ER waiting room with uh, some big screen TVs for the people that are waiting. Also computer. And this is the regular registration area. Welcome to this week's edition of The Health Story. My name is Dee Dee Harris and I'm the Executive Director of Walton Wellness, a nonprofit located in Walton County dedicated to the prevention of lifestyle related illness, focusing on diabetes and heart disease. Every week I like to come to you and talk to you about a special event that Walton Wellness is sponsoring or something else that's going on in the community that I think might be helpful to you or bring you a topic that I think might actually um, benefit you or your family, especially on your journey to having a healthy lifestyle and getting fit or maybe losing weight. Today I want to talk to you about an event that Walton Wellness is actually holding on April 20, on April 14th, excuse me. April 14th we are having what we're calling the Family Cycle Day. And I'm very excited about this event because it has to do with a new campaign that we are launching with Walton Wellness called Pedal Power. And if you watch this program ever or seen me, you know that I am definitely a big advocate of bike riding. I enjoy bike riding myself and I really try to encourage my children to do it. And it's just a great fun way of getting some exercise and living an active lifestyle. So we have decided to launch a new campaign called Pedal Power that really focuses on families and targets families, encouraging them to ride their bikes together as a way of living a healthy lifestyle. And especially for children, um, as you know, you've heard in the news and everywhere else that our childhood obesity rate is way too high in the state of Georgia. Unfortunately, Walton County is no different. We have a childhood obesity problem here, just like we do all over the South and all over the United States. 
So we want to encourage kids to get on their bikes and have a good time riding their bikes and we want the whole family to do it together. It's a great way to exercise together, it's also a great way to bond together as well when you're doing a fun activity such as that. So on April 14th we have Family Cycle Day and we're going to put this flyer so that you can see it on um, the screen. But actually we are very fortunate to have Daryl McWaters who owns Corn Dogs has uh, donated some property, the use of some property that he originally had to actually build a subdivision and never did build the houses. So it's actually got the roads and everything already in it, but no houses. So he has graciously let us use this um, undeveloped subdivision. We're gonna go in there and we're gonna invite all the families in Walton County to come and bring their bikes and ride together. As part of this event, we also have Safe Kids from the Walton County Sheriff's Office that is involved and we're doing a bike rodeo which teaches kids as well as adults about safety, riding on the road. We're gonna have free helmets to give away <clears throat> we're also going to fit kids for the helmets because not everybody knows how to properly wear their helmet and oftentimes just having the helmet on isn't necessarily going to help you if you have an accident or fall off your bike. So you need to have that helmet on but you also need to have it on properly. So we're going to be there showing you giving new helmets away to the kids and actually fitting them for the helmet so that it's going to fit properly so if they do fall off their bike then their head is going to be protected. The Sheriff's Office is also going to be out riding with us that day and it's just an opportunity to have some family fun without having to worry about any traffic and be on paved roads. So we want to encourage you, please come out on April 14th, that's the Saturday after spring break, um, so a good chance to get back together and, and do something fun for the whole family. And um, our event actually starts at 10 o'clock, it's from 10 to 1 and we encourage you to bring a picnic lunch. We are gonna have snacks and um, all of those kind of things that are gonna be available free, uh, but we encourage you to bring a picnic lunch for the whole family and, and just enjoy the day um, from 10 to one. These flyers are gonna be available throughout the community, but you can find us on Facebook. If you go to facebook slash familycycleday.com, you will find um, a whole page that gives you all the information. It also has the directions to where we're actually having this. It's gonna be off Youth Monroe Road, directly across from the Mormon Church is where this undeveloped subdivision is. And <clears throat> so we're very excited about on the back of the flyer, if you do pick one of these up, you'll see that there are directions as well. You can also visit waltonwellness.org and find um, information about it as well. So hopefully we will see you out on April 14th for the Family Cycle Day to celebrate pedal power. We're gonna have t-shirts uh, available also. So I think it's gonna be a really fun, exciting day for the whole family and something everyone can enjoy. If you have any questions, please find us on the web at waltonwellness.org. You can email me or you can always try to get me the old fashioned way, the way I say it is 770-856-1251. Thanks for watching. Hi, I'm Rick Baker with the Partnership for Families, Children, and Youth. I'm sitting in today for Dina Huff. I wanted to talk with you today about a drug forum that we have coming up on April the 26th at the Monroe Area High School. The drug forum will start at 7 p.m. and we're going to be talking about some, uh, some problems that have come up, some of which you may be aware of and some of which you may not. There's uh, an increasing problem with prescription drug abuse, not just here in Walton County, but across the country. This is the most rapid growing form of drug abuse that we face right now. And uh, we have brought together a panel of experts from a wide variety of fields to discuss this problem. Uh, I think that if you come to this forum you will be educated, informed, and hopefully equipped to go back out into the community and, and make a difference in your own home uh, and in your neighborhood. Another area that uh, is a current problem is spice, otherwise known as synthetic marijuana. 
Fortunately, the General Assembly just passed a law to outlaw this that will become effective in July. We're going to go ahead and talk about this uh, because even though spice may be uh, made illegal in July to sell in our stores, uh, profiteers always seem to find a way to get around laws one way or the other. And so even if spice is made illegal and unavailable, the next substance is just around the corner. And we need to find ways to keep our parents informed about how they can keep involved, keep alert, keep aware of what's going on in their children's lives. This next substance that we're going to talk about, uh, it's amazing that just two months ago I had never heard of it. And the more parents that I talk to, uh, the more I'm finding out that most of them are unaware of it. It's called bath salts. And, and people are like, they're using stuff you put in your bath to get high with. Well, actually, it's not anything that you would put in your bath. And that's how it's marketed, but its only purpose is for kids to get high. Well, not just kids, adults use it too. And so we're going to be uh, focusing primarily on these three areas in, in this drug form. But we'll also uh, talk some about the old standbys, marijuana and alcohol. We'll have, uh, we'll have some materials available uh, for free. These will be available uh, for parents to pick up. And so uh, we hope that you will come out and join us uh, April the 26th at the Monroe Area High School Auditorium at 7 p.m. This is open to all parents in the county, teens, uh, preferably middle school and up. Tell people that you know, invite them to come with you. We would love to fill the auditorium up and uh, be educated, be informed, and, and most importantly, uh, be equipped to go out and make a difference yourself. Uh, it's impossible for us to carry this work on alone. We need your help. If you need more information about this forum, you can call me. My name is Rick Baker, 770-207-3176, or Amy Honeywell, who is also helping me coordinate this, at 770-207-3174. And if you need more, part, no, more information about the partnership, you can contact us at 770-207-6060. Thank you, and I hope you have a great day. Good morning. My name is Glenn Blair, and I'm the 4-H coordinator here in Walton County. And this morning, uh, we want to tell you a little bit about a program that we have here in Walton County, is our GOAT program. And uh, let me back up a little bit. Uh, we work for the University of Georgia, uh, part of the College of Agriculture and Environmental Science. And uh, we work here in Walton County. And with me this morning, uh, we have Gwen Queen, that is our program assistant here in Walton County. And we have Trevor Queen, and we have Daniel Queen. And uh, they're in our GOAT program. And we want to tell you a little bit about uh, what's going on here in Walton County. Uh, so, uh, Trevor, you want to tell us a little bit about uh, what you're doing with the GOAT program and uh, when you started showing? I've been doing a lot of things with goats. One thing is I've done a presentation about how goats can clear out for forest to prevent forest fires. They can also use for land, reju land rejuvenation, erosion control. They can also be used for cleaning pastures, meat, and dairy. And gloves for kids. Also, 
but one of my favorite thing is showing goats. I've been showing goats for one year, and it's been very fun. And okay, so. very good, Daniel. You want to tell us a little bit uh, about uh, how you, what you're doing in the goat program? All right, I'm showing goats for the most part, and um, in our upcoming uh, meat goat show, the market show, I'm gonna be showing uh, peaches over here, and. Um, Pretty much in these shows, they want to figure out how much how much meat is on the goat itself, for, because this is supposed to be used for them to be sold to the market for their meat. And what they'll do is they'll check the loin and the the rump and the shaft for the most part of the meat. And the judge will come up and he'll you'll be standing there, he'll rub all over it and figure out how much meat's pretty much on it, and you'll be judged accordingly. Um, and what day will that? June. June the second. June second is our next. Uh, next goat show for the meat. There's also another part of uh, showing goats, it's the showmanship part. And in the showmanship part, you're not judged by the goat itself, you're judged by the, the person, who's, the trainer, the person who's doing it. And what you'll do is he'll judge on how well you handle yourself if the goat's being difficult, or how well you handle yourself, you know, with questions that he asks, like what kind of feed do you use, or well, what would you uh, improve your goat upon on meat-wise and stuff like that. Um, those are our two main. There's also a dairy goat show coming up May 26th in Walton County, and they'll judge uh, the milk part of the goat. Um, Mr. Blair, if you want to. Okay. All right. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, now, we have a goat here. This goat is, uh, hasn't been prepared for showing. Uh, the goat that Daniel has up on the stand uh, has been groomed, and what we do with the goats is uh, we have to wash them and get all the dirt and, and uh, out of their hair and then we clip them and we usually clip them down to about three-eighths of an inch long uh, and we clip them all over their body uh, like this one's been clipped and then uh, let that hair grow out uh, to about three-eighths to a half inch long and all those clipper marks go away. Uh, so they look real nice and smooth. But that's one of the things that the 4-H'ers have to do when they get ready to show the goats. Uh, another thing that we're doing with goats here in Walton County is we take them to all the fifth grade classes. And Gwen, you want to tell us a little bit about what we do with that? Sure, I'll be glad to. <laughs> Our Fifth grade classes, we visit those classes each month and we tell them different things, um, whether it have to do with eggs or, or milk or their project area or, or there's a whole lot of variety of different um, things that we, we talk about in the different classes. This month we are talking about goats and what we do is we take several of the baby goats out to the, the schools and tell the children exactly what goats are used for. Um, and, and different things about goat showing and trying to get them interested in, in this, this great program. So we, we take them out and they get to have a hands-on experience and actually get to pet the goats um, and, and get to, to visit with them a little bit while they're, they're in, the, in the class, outside the classroom. Now, the goat show, the goat club and, and goat showing is a family affair. And as you can see, these, these are my two sons and, and we do a lot together as a family because of this, this goat program. They both have, are involved in it, and many parents come out and they find they enjoy goat showing as much as the kids when they when they get involved in it. It is something that the parents are, they do come to the goat meetings, it's not a drop off type thing. They do come and they're just as involved as the kids are, and it's a lot of fun. It's it's a, a very, very good activity to do if, um, if you want to get closer to your kids and, and give them an experience of being with the goats themselves and having some some activities with with animals okay thanks Gwen uh, and this is one of the programs uh, like Gwen said that is family oriented uh, we had a meeting this week and uh, we actually had a hot dog cookout and uh, all the parents brought different things for the cookout and then we uh, cooked hot dogs and then we had our a uh, little training session where we had new kids that are coming and they uh, were learning about how to train their goats and getting ready for the shows. Uh, but uh, one of the things that we like to do 
especially with our fifth grade classes, is we like to tell them where, uh, where their food comes from. And that's one thing that we, we feel like is uh, missing in our school systems. Uh, the kids get separated from the farm and they don't understand where the food comes from. And, uh, you know, goats are just an easy way for us to uh, tell the, the students about uh, where their food and their fiber and uh, the different uses for goats. Uh, and this could tie right into the, the other food products that come from the farm. Uh, so we hope that uh, you've enjoyed our presentation today about goats. And if you're interested in this project or any of the 4-H projects that we have uh, to offer, you can call us at the 4-H office. And that number is 770-267-1324. And again, uh, my name is Glenn Blair, this is Gwen Queen, and Trevor Queen, and Daniel uh, Queen, and uh, we're with the Walton County 4-H uh, Club, and we're part of the University of Georgia College of Agriculture and Environmental Science. I'm Elaine Oates, Director of Keep Walk Beautiful in the Walton County Recycling Center, joining you with this week's edition of the Walton Waste Watcher Report. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about um, some projects um, that are going on and will go on. Um, the Social Circle um, Clean City Committee um, actually had a cleanup um, on Saturday, March the 31st. And we were involved with, um, with that cleanup as we usually are. But I want to share um, Mike Miller's report. He's the um, manager of the Social Circle Better Hometown Program. And they actually picked up 124 bags of trash. And they had 137 people sign in to participate. And they confirmed 24 different groups or organizations that helped with that cleanup. And I just want to really, really commend them because this is something that has become um, a consistent um, program for them to, to do, do a cleanup in the spring and in the fall. And they have a a wonderful turnout. Every time they have one, I wonder, okay, I wonder if people are going to show up, you know, today. And they all come out and they have biscuits and coffee and, and congregate in their little um, meeting hall there. And then everybody goes out and, and cleans their assigned area. And it's just, I don't know, it's just a wonderful community um, activity that sort of brings them all together. And um, <clears throat> so I want to thank them for participating um, in the Great American Cleanup, and those are their results that will be um, reported to Keep America Beautiful. We also had a contact from the Monroe Qantas, and they're going to, um, they have like an international, I think, volunteer day, I believe that's what they call it. Um, and they're going to, they contacted me about an, uh, what they might could do to help. And because last year, um, uh, this, uh, Mike Miller, who was in Leadership Walton, sort of coordinated his class, and they had efforts in all across the county uh, for cleanups, being a part of the Great American Cleanup. And so I had not heard anything from anybody else this year. So when this lady contacted me from Kiwanis, I contacted Emily Russell with the Downtown Development Authority um, of Monroe. And um, she is going to work with Aquinas in um, helping them complete their volunteer uh, requirement. And they're going to be doing a cleanup in in the uh, downtown area of Monroe on April the 21st. And Emily said that was going to actually work really well because they are having the Kids Fest on the 19th of April. So the, uh, there'll be a cleanup after the Kids Fest, and that should be a real helpful thing. And we appreciate Emily and Kiwanis working with us on that effort. And um, 
I do want to remind everybody, as I have been doing for every week, that we will have our um, document destruction day on May the 5th, Saturday, May the 5th, um, and it will be in the Carmichael parking lot. And um, we are very grateful to the Lindsay Group for helping us out with that, and for Carmichael, who'll who'll be sending out a lot of our flyers in their um, bill bills that they send. And um, we're really trying to advertise this as much as we can, so people can take advantage of this wonderful opportunity to get rid of any private information. And they can you could bring up to two banker boxes um, of documents per vehicle, and it will be from ten until 1 a 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. sorry but anyway so those are some of the things that are going on right now and the other thing I wanted to talk just a little bit about is about our general general recycling efforts out here in Walton County I ran into a very nice couple at uh, the grocery store this week and they said I, we wish you would talk to us a little bit about what you take at the recycling center and I wanted to just um, remind people of, of the things that we do take here. We take aluminum cans um, and we take um, beverage cans only. We take um, steel cans um, and we take um, plastics number one and two and by one and two you look on the bottom of the container and you will see a little triangle and inside that container inside the triangle there will be a number and we don't take other numbers here we just don't have room to do that for the in our, you know the way we're set up in our processing but um, so we don't want any kind of plastic bags or styrofoam and um, we do ask still that people try to remove their caps and rinse out their uh, bottles and jars because it just we have a lot of problems with um, rodents and we have problems with uh, bees and yellow jackets so we try to keep try to keep them rinsed out so it won't uh, attract those kind of things into our recycling area um, we take um, mobile phones and we take um, batteries all different kinds of batteries car batteries household um, you know batteries as well as rechargeable batteries um, we do take glass bottles and jars and same thing as with the um, the, pl the plastic and um, we, we ask that you rinse them out and throw away the lid and um, we don't take any kind of plate glass mirrors dishes or light bulbs we take newspaper we take corrugated cardboard and we take magazines. We take, um, gosh, we, we take computers and computer parts, you know, electronics. We have that all the time. Some people, I think they, that couple was asking me why, when we had an electronics day. And we don't do that because we take electronics every day. And um, it doesn't matter. You know, we take them every single day. And um, we also take motor oil, used motor oil. And, um, I know I feel like I'm forgetting something, but and I will forget something. But those are our basic recyclables, and we want you know we want people to take advantage of what we have to offer here. So, if if you want to know more about uh, what we do here, and you live in the city of Monroe, we take more items here than they're able to take on on their truck. So if you're interested in that. Um, I forgot a, a big one, and that's corrugated cardboard, and, and that's something that you can't put into your curbside uh, container. So, you know, we, we would like to talk to you. We'd love to, you know, for you to ask us any questions about it. And our um, location here is really right, right outside Monroe. We're, we're off of Highway 11 as you go out towards Social Circle, and we are, um, our road is just past Betta's Funeral Home on Highway 11. You turn there onto Leroy Anderson, and we're down at the dead end. So really and truly, we are right at three miles from the old historic courthouse. So we're not too far outside of town, and um, I think we're pretty easy to get to get to and we really are here to serve citizens um, within and without the you know the city limits of all our areas in Walton County so please give us a call if you have any questions our number is 770-267-1421 thank you so much for watching bye bye hello I'm 
Emily Russell, your new Main Street and Downtown Development Coordinator for Downtown Monroe. Thank you for visiting with us. We're so glad to have you here in Downtown Monroe. We just wanted to let you know about some of the exciting and fun events that are coming up for us here in Downtown Monroe. On April 19th, which is a Thursday, from 4 to 7 p.m., we will be hosting our Super Summer Kids Activity Fair. Now, this event is going to be in conjunction with Georgia Cities Week. So, at City Hall, you can get free Pepsi products as well as free hot dogs that will be distributed to the first couple thousand people to come and enjoy. In addition, you can pick up goodie bags there with information about summer camp opportunities and some of our downtown businesses. Then finally, on April the 19th, also with the Super Summer Kids Activity Fair, we will be hosting an activity fair here around the courthouse and along Court Street on, in downtown Monroe. Here you'll be able to find everything from cotton candy and popcorn to jump houses to beanbag tosses, face painting, and more. So we hope that you'll come out to enjoy this time with us, this afternoon with us, to help connect with some of the different organizations that will be doing different summer camps and summer activities for children around Walton County. This is a great opportunity for you to get out and come and spend some time with us in downtown Monroe, get hooked up with some great opportunities, as well as maybe spend a little bit of time strolling our streets, shopping in our stores and eating in our restaurants. If you haven't been to downtown Monroe lately, please come on down. We've got lots going on. Like I said, our April the 19th Kids Summer Activity Fair will be from 4 to 7 here in downtown Monroe. And then we'll be kicking off our summer concert series beginning with May. The first Friday of May, June, July, August, and September, we will be hosting bands from all around the region to come here and perform on the courthouse lawn for all of Walton County citizens to come out and enjoy for free. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact us at the Downtown Development Office. And lastly, we'll be starting a farmer's market here in downtown Monroe, beginning Saturday, May 19th, running all the way through the end of the season. We hope that you'll come and purchase locally grown produce from some of our local farmers and local producers. Come and check out our arts and crafts vendors, as well as just spend some time downtown walking around and enjoying the weather and whatnot um, with family and friends. So if you have any questions about our upcoming events or you want to be involved in any way, you want to volunteer, we're always looking for volunteers to make all of these events possible. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact us at the City Hall of Monroe, the Main Street Office, the Downtown Development Office, and that number is 770-266-5331. Thanks so much and I look forward to seeing you around Downtown Monroe. Thanks for tuning in today. We're going to show you some of the dogs and cats that are available here at uh, Walton County Animal Shelter. As always, our adoption fee is only $40. Uh, we haven't gone up on that fee in a long, long time and don't plan to, but we offer a lot more with those adoptions for the $40. Uh, first off, you get a great cat or dog, uh, but you also get a distemper parvo vaccine or the, the feline vaccine for the cats. We deworm all of the animals. We offer microchipping for free. Uh, you get a voucher for a rabies vaccination as well. And then we give you discounted uh, spay and neuter at a lot of participating veterinarians. Uh, if an animal's already spayed or neutered, which many of them are, uh, there's no additional charge for that. So you can't beat that. All those services at a veterinarian will cost you way more than $40. So there's no reason to not come down to Walton County Animal Control and adopt your next pet. And so now we're going to show you some of the dogs and cats that are available here at the shelter. Uh, a lab about three to four years old, not neutered, looking for a good home. They love kids playing in the water. This is Harrison. He's a six-year-old male lab. He's not neutered. He's really sweet. He's a big old boy and he can really use a good home. We got litter of puppies. Uh, this is just two of them. They're both females. They're lab pit mixes, probably about three months old. They have had their first shots and have been wormed. Very sweet. Hey, this is Dover. He's probably a eight to ten year old shepherd mix. Maybe a little bit of Rottweiler in there, not sure. Uh, he was picked up and brought in and no owners come forward looking for him. 
problem for Dover is that Dover is that he's heartworm positive. You know, if you live anywhere in the south, you really need to have your dogs on heartworm preventative. Anywhere that mosquitoes are prevalent, that's how the heartworm disease is transmitted. Uh, you've got to have your animals on heartworm preventative. So, you know, eventually the heartworms would cause his, his death. Uh, but the problem now is it's harder for us to find an adopter or a rescue for him being heartworm positive. So if you've got pets at home, uh, make sure you get them on heartworm preventative. This is a Chihuahua mix female, probably about two years old. Very sweet, looking for, looking for a good home. This is April, she's a two-year-old pit bull. She is spayed, she's really sweet, real playful. She could really use a good home. Come on. This is little Clay. He's uh, maybe a Shih Tzu mix or mixed with a mop, not really sure. Uh, he's a cute little guy. We do get a lot of little dogs in here for adoption. A lot of real nice, cute dogs. It's not just big, ugly mutts like everyone thinks is down at the pound, but we've got a lot of uh, great purebred dogs and small dogs, house dogs, anything that you're looking for, you can just give us a call or send us an email uh, and we can let you know when something comes in. But this little guy, he's available for adoption. He's probably going to get adopted this week, so he may not be here you know, when the show comes out. Uh, but always remember to look at waltonpets.net and you can see what dogs we have available for adoption.